All right, so last but not least in this block, we have an interview with two of the most famous Bitcoin investors in the game. We're talking about Cameron and Tyler Winklevoss, of course. The founders of the Gemini Exchange are looking to bring regulation-friendly trading to the masses, first launching out of New York City with Gemini in 2015. Uh, Cameron and Tyler are here with us now. Thank you so much for joining us. Hey, guys. Thanks for having us. Happy hey, thanks having you. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah. So first first of all, I wanted to keep it light. First of all, happy having day. I'm sure you guys were tuning into that. That's pretty exciting. Um, any initial thoughts on the having and what you're expecting to uh, to play out from here? You know, every uh, so when the first having happened, I think we didn't even know it was happening. It was so long ago. Um, obviously, the second one was a big deal. And it seems like every four years, uh, things improve by an order of magnitude whether it's price, the human capital coming into space, the the projects. So I expect this four years to be the best four yet. Yeah, and I, I think the actual event tends to be a non-event, um, other than obviously the celebration and, and the milestone. Um, and, and that's really exciting. But I think a lot of sort of the reduced sell pressure and the, um, the actual economics start to kind of kick in and be felt um, generally a little bit after. It, um, of course, this happening has COVID in, in the backdrop, which changes everything. Um, and in many ways, sort of the stage for a store of value like Bitcoin has been set. Um, so I think like a lot of the things that we've talked about, like Bitcoin being digital gold and safe haven and all that stuff, um, the talking points have been the same since, you know, we got into Bitcoin about eight years ago in the first halving. Um, but the, the dynamics of fiat regimes has drastically changed. So you guys just referenced that you're OGs in the space. I think at one point you owned, what was it, 1% of Bitcoin in circulation? So I'm really curious to hear from you if you've ever considered sponsoring a Bitcoin core dev or finding another way to contribute to the decentralized system that makes Bitcoin itself so secure. Definitely. Um, obviously, our biggest contribution to the space right now, other than investment um, and investment in other startups, is Gemini. So that's really where our time, um, energy, and and money is 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 being put to work. We're we're not only the founders, and Tyler's the CEO. Uh, he was kind enough to hire me um, five five or six years ago. I'm the president of Gemini, um, but we're also the the main and sole investors of that. Um, but definitely look to support other projects, um, both in the Bitcoin world and other crypto ecosystem. Speaking of Gemini, you guys are one of the first license exchanges to offer Zcash. And I'm curious to hear from you what it was that made Zcash palatable to a very heavily regulated exchange and to compliance officers when things like Bitcoin mixers and other similar privacy technologies haven't been embraced quite as much. Sure. I, go ahead, Tar. Yeah. No, I was going to say commercial privacy is really important. And I think a lot of people worry that the Bitcoin blockchain is actually too public. Um, and you can see the movement of funds. So if things like if a bank uh, sends Bitcoin to another bank, uh, people can see that um, and maybe front run that information or do other stuff. So um, the commercial privacy that people have in the current system, whether it's going to credit cards, you know, you spend a credit card at your doctor's office or something, people don't see that other than your bank. All of a sudden, the Bitcoin blockchain, the whole world can sort of triangulate your transactions. So Zcash is bringing commercial privacy to the blockchain. And we thought that it was really, it's a really important concept. The team, Zuko, um, is great. Uh, the technology is incredible. So it's the right team to do it. So we got comfortable with not only the concept of commercial privacy, but the team behind it. Yeah, you mentioned, you know, the Zcash ecosystem. We're obviously talking heavily about the Bitcoin ecosystem. You know, which other token ecosystems do you guys sort of expect to see growing uh, during this crisis and beyond? What are the projects that are particularly interesting to you uh, beyond the aforementioned coins that we've talked about? So we just launched uh, trading support for Orchid, OXT, uh, Dai, uh, Link, and Bat. Um, and those projects are, are quite interesting because they're all sort of solving for real use cases. In the case of Orchid, you've got a decentralized trustless VPN. With Bat, you've got a private browsing experience. Um, Dai is a fundamental building block of DeFi. 
So those are, you know, the, the most recent four projects that we've supported on Gemini, and we'll look to support more in the coming year, as well as more fiat currencies. We currently only have the U.S. dollar pairs, um, but expect, uh, you know, pound and euro uh, in, in, in the months or quarters to come as we expand into Europe, um, into Asia as well. So, um, you know, I think we're, we're always looking for projects that are, are solving real problems with real teams. Um, and, and I think those are good examples of that. They're not sort of crypto problems or white papers that are trying to sort of in search for an issue to solve. Um, these are real issues around privacy and experience and decentralized finance. Um, so we're really excited about supporting those. You had mentioned expanding into Europe. I'm curious, especially because there's a big expat community from Latin America, in particular in Spain and Italy. Uh, do you think that's going to be driving any DAI usage for Gemini, or are there other factors that you think are going to be driving the demand for DAI? I think most DAI right now is um, <clears throat> is is in the DeFi um, world, um, but that could obviously change and evolve. I mean. Um, so much happens in such a short period of time in this space, which makes it kind of hard to keep up, but also super exciting because you literally don't know what's around the corner year to year. Um, and I think like our expansion to Europe, we have a, a license you know, pending with the FCA and um, we're really excited about that part of the world. There's you know, 200 million plus people, um, many of which predominantly English speaking. Um, so it's sort of a very obvious uh, next step for us. Um, and we're excited about that. So uh, in addition to Gemini, you guys obviously run Winklevoss Capital. So on the venture side of things, you're also involved. Uh, I think it's interesting that Winklevoss Capital has investments in any number of tech startups. I think there's even a coffee startup in there. Is that right? Yeah. So, uh, you know, as you guys, as you guys look forward on the venture side, uh, what's the allocation going to be like? What do you anticipate the allocation being like when it comes to crypto projects versus traditional projects versus other things entirely? What do you see as like sound investment targets when you look at equity investment? So I think one of the nice things about Wigboss Capital is that it's, it's a private um, investment firm. And, and so we have a lot of flexibility in our mandate. Um, and, and so if we decide, you know, there's a lot of great crypto projects coming online and, and we want to go heavier there, we can do that. Um, and if we decide, you know, a, a cold brew, uh, nitro brew coffee company makes a lot of sense, we can do that too. And I think it really is investment dependent, um, life cycle dependent on when we find the investment. And a lot of times what we like to do is support uh, companies sort of on the way up um, and participate in multiple rounds and, and be with the founders for, for many fundraises. And there's, there's a lot of agility and flexibility because it is a family office. A lot of funds early on didn't have their deal docs um, allow them to invest in Bitcoin. So a lot of the partners put their own personal account money into Bitcoin, but they had to wait for a new fundraise or retool the fund, fund documents to actually get the permission to hold what's legally a commodity in the United States. So that flexibility allowed us to invest in Bitcoin early. And we think it's a really big asset. So we tend to just invest in what we think is cool, things that we use and are authentic to, to us. So that could be um, a coffee company, that could be cryptocurrency. On day one, it was just Bitcoin, and there wasn't a lot of great companies built in Bitcoin, and then Bitcoin became crypto, and there's a lot of companies. So we've sort of seen the worlds collide. Um, you know, we just had Bitcoin in our portfolio for, for many years, and then now we look at so many companies that are crypto related. Um, so it's been interesting to see how venture capital and crypto have really become uh, one since about like 2017. Got a lot going on with you guys. You keep a, a hand in a lot of pots, so it's fantastic to hear from you today. Uh, thanks for joining us at Consensus. Uh, we're going to leave it there, and we have to kick it to our next big event. So, Tyler, Cameron, thanks so much. We really appreciate you taking the time. So, coming up next, for the viewers at home, we are going to unwind a little bit. We're going to take it a little bit easy. We're going to listen to some live music. That's right. We are enlisting the help of eight celebrity musicians to raise money for COVID-19 relief. So stay right here on Coindesk TV to see Akon, Skip Marley, Haley Smalls, 
and others bringing you live music and some fun. It's a musical extravaganza. It's all for a good cause. Stick with us on Coindesk TV. Yeah. <laughs>